everyone, how's it going? My name is Harmony Nice and today we'll be continuing my Enchanted Endeavours series which in case you guys aren't aware what it is, it's a series about all the aspects of Wicca, the deities and basically everything in between. And today we will be talking about runestones and the magic surrounding them. All my previous Enchanted Endeavours episodes are in a playlist in the description below so if you guys haven't seen any of them before they are all there. So like I said today I will be discussing the highly requested subject on runestones. I definitely feel like runestones have been the hardest thing to find out about on the internet and through other people and stuff because some people don't really know a lot about it and it's not like as a popular thing as tarots are. I have been using runes pretty much since I started Wicca. So the first half of this video will be discussing what runes are and why we use runes and also the relevancy to Wicca and why Wiccans use them. Where you can purchase runes, how to take care of your runes and also connecting with your runes. The difference between tarots and rune stones and why there's differences between the two and also the sets I have and what runes are right for you which sounds like a lot to get through but I swear it's not as complicated as it sounds and the other half of this video will be a kind of how to do demonstration on rune casting and just using a few methods that I personally use myself but before anything I must say this is a personal view on how to use runes I can only actually tell you what I've learned and my personal experience with runes and a lot of other people will use runes differently and many other people have different methods and experiences and that is totally okay so please just remember that. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I really really hope you're enjoying this series so far. Obviously as you can see I'm definitely going to be carrying on with this because I love doing these videos so... So what are rune stones and what are they used for? So runes are an extremely ancient set of alphabetic symbols that are engraved onto a stone or wood or plastic or sometimes even crystal. A set of rune stones typically has 24 stones even though they can range up to around 30 stones depending on their origin. Most runes have a letter or a symbol from the Elder Firthark alphabet with a different meaning and a different interpretation to each symbol. I think if I'm correct some rune stones actually have different alphabets on but I'm not 100% sure on that I've just seen different types of rune sets that have different symbols on but as far as I'm aware this is the main alphabet that is used some sets even include a little blank rune stone but again not all sets do rune stones can be used for a lot of different things but the main thing that they're used for which you guys have probably heard about is future prediction or fortune telling or even decision making some people use it just to get a further insight into a situation that they need help with some people even use use rune stones to connect with the dead and some people use them for spell work. Runes are believed to work alongside your subconscious to produce really really effective results and kind of help you guide you in the way that you need to be guided in and typically you cast your runes into a cloth or a mat depending on what your method is. Some even cast them into like a bowl or something. That is kind of the basic description on what runes actually are. I'm not going to go too far into the history of runes right now but I will link a really good website in the description below just because there is so so much to the history of runes. So do runes runes actually predict the future? This has been a question that has been so commonly asked to me and the answer is yes and no. Much like tarot's runes don't actually predict the future as such. They can't like tell you exactly how things are going to pan out and happen and that's how it's going to be. As a Wiccan we personally believe that you do not have a set path in life so not everything's just decided. So again this means runes are obviously not dangerous. I do not think that runes have like a really dangerous stigma around them much like tarot's do but still a couple of people have asked me if it's dangerous to use them like tarots and again tarots and runes aren't dangerous so like I said it is a common misconception that runes are used for future prediction using runes to help you with the future is more like asking for spiritual guidance or spiritual help if you have a situation you're not quite sure on and they can also just give you a better insight into the future and the insight to do with the situations rather than telling you like this is going to happen runes much like tarots kind of tell you what will happen in the future if the situation doesn't change but a lot of people do believe believe that the stones are not just selected at random that in your subconscious you actually choose the runes purposely. So in a way we already kind of know what path we're supposed to take but the runes kind of just bring it to the surface and just enlighten us with it a little bit. So a lot of people have asked me do runes and tarots do the same thing and why would you have runes and tarots if they do the same thing? So yeah both of them can be used for divination and yes both of them tell the future in a way like this is what's going to happen if the situation doesn't change. I personally choose using tarots or runes depending on what the situation I need 
is. So tarot's I kind of use when I'm feeling a little bit troubled and sometimes I'm not quite sure why. And I do also feel like tarot's are much better for like general readings, even though runes can be good for these. Even though I do feel very, very strongly connected to tarot's in like every single way. And they do give very, very in-depth insightful things as well. Sometimes I just feel runes are more appropriate for the situation that I need help with. Tarot's are a very, very personal way to connect with yourself and the universe. Whereas runes, most of the time they are usually a bit of the universe, like a stone or a crystal or a rock or a bit of wood. Rune readings can sometimes be odd and most of the time they hint towards answers and you kind of have to work out the rest for yourself. The word rune actually means whisper, secret, mystery, which kind of answers that. So if I have a situation that I'd really like to go into depth into, most of the time I edge towards runes more than I do tarots. I feel like owning both of them is not a problem. I definitely think you should. I think they're very, very different methods. So what actually is the relevancy between runestones and wicker? Runes are basically known for having magical properties and also protection properties as well. Like I mentioned, runes are mainly used for seeking spiritual advice if you need help with the situation, which I'm very aware that many Wiccans do use. Wiccans can also use runes for meditation, much like you can with crystals and tarots and other natural elements. If you do a rune reading and you cast a rune that you instantly are drawn to and you feel like you want to go further into depth in what it means, you can always do some meditation with them like that. And yes, of course, runes can be used for spell casting. Runes are pretty much known for protection, so obviously you can cast protection spells with runes. They're extremely, extremely important medium for protection spells, I feel. And I've also drawn some rune symbols onto my wand. And also since runes are also known as very highly powerful and kind of a good way to take control of your life and see it from the outside and you know have it in your hands. They are also used for success spells and power spells. So if the rune stone is relevant to the spell you'd like to do, they can help you there as well. And quickly, like I mentioned in my tarot video, runes can be used whenever you feel like you need to use them. When it comes to the usual rune casting, like if you just need spiritual advice or you're just seeking help with a situation, but again, do not repeat the questions that you have for the situations and stuff. You kind of have to trust the runes and what they've spoken. If you keep repeating the same subject over and over again, your runes will not be accurate and you just kind of have to listen to what they say the first time. Use them for spells when needed and use them for meditation when needed, but like I said, just, just trust the runes. Trust the runes. So how do you connect with runes? Most of you guys know if you're a Wiccan or you're just learning in Wicca. If you receive something or get something that you are going to use in magic or spellcasting or future prediction or necromancy, anything of the sort, you need to connect with the item. You need to kind of purify them from any unwanted energy to begin with before you do any rune casting with them. You can cleanse your runes in a lot of different ways and I know a lot of Wiccans do loads and loads of tons of different ways to cleanse their runes. A few of them wash their runes in really, really pure water, obviously safely so you don't lose any. Definitely not tap water. Some of them leave them outside on a full moon and just leave them overnight and people say that helps them get rid of any unwanted energy. But I personally use the smoke method, even though I do think the one about the full moon is a very, very good idea. So what the smoke method is, kind of in the name, you cleanse your runes using smoke. You can do this whenever you feel like you need to get rid of any unwanted energy or someone else has touched your runes or you just kind of feel like you need to spiritually connect with your runes again. Then I basically do the same as I do with crystals and tarots, that I carry the runes around with me for maybe a couple of weeks to a month at a time. And I basically keep them with me constantly to kind of get used to my pattern and life. And I also sleep with them next to my pillow and my bed. And I also try to use them as frequently as I possibly can in spells and in meditation and for casting as well. And also you can place them in your altar. Some people choose to lay them out completely in your altar so they kind of get used to your patterns again. But like I said, it just depends on the person. So where do you purchase rune stones? A lot of people have asked me, where do you get your rune stones? And the answer is you can quite easily get hold of rune stones. I feel like getting runes from the internet is totally fine, even though the ones that I've personally purchased from the internet I've had like no connection with really. But it is totally different from everyone. I have people that have got runes from the internet and they're like their pride and joy. And there is other sets that you can buy on Amazon. I know it's hard for some of you guys to find runes in shops near you. So you can also actually get runes from specialized wicker websites, which will probably be a little bit more accurate than Amazon. But like I said, everybody connects with rune sets differently. But I personally got my rune set from a local pagan shop near me. So are there different types of runes and what set is best for me or 
you guys. Yes, there is crazy, crazy loads of amounts of different rune sets made of different materials, like I said at the beginning. And it also does work a lot like tarot cards in which you will be drawn to a certain set. So for example, when I got my first set of runes, they were just like little plastic runes that I ordered from the internet. I do feel like they helped me practice and they did get me really really well started in runes and they're also extremely informative and they have the pronunciations of every single different rune in there which is amazing okay but because they were plastic to me they just didn't feel as accurate as i would have liked them to be but once i've been practicing them for around like a year and a half i moved on to some different runes that my little sister actually made but again i didn't practice them a crazy crazy amount just because i didn't really feel that drawn to them even though they're absolutely lovely runes and they are ones that you have seen in some of my previous previous pictures on Instagram I knew that I was I felt like I needed to get a different set but most recently I got some rose quartz runes trying to hold them out for this video <laughs> so if there is like a certain type of wood or stone or crystal that you're extremely drawn to try to find some runes that are made of that and yes you can make your own runes so if you would like to make your own runes that is extremely possible I do think it helped me a lot just having these kind of basic rooms to begin with but if you find a set you do feel drawn to definitely get them because once you know you know just because this set works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you it doesn't work that way like I know a lot of people were like oh I want to get the same tarot as you do that's great if you're drawn to them then you go for it but just because you like the look of them doesn't automatically mean you're going to be like drawn to them so that's totally fine again if you're connected with them you're connected with them but chances are you should probably go your own way and find some runes that you just connect with yourself so what set do i have I, like i said i've had three rune sets since i have been practicing with my runes but the ones that i got most recently and the ones that i feel the most connection with are the low scarabio i think that's how you pronounce it uh, rose quartz runes and my personal runes that actually have 26 stones including a blank one so how do I store runes again a lot of people were questioning how you store runes without losing them and I feel like the best way to store runes is either in a little pouch or a box that you know is going to be secure I have stored my previous ones in black pouches but this one is in a little pink pouch which actually came in which I just felt like it was perfect for them because pink rose quartz if you do keep them in the box, you usually keep them in the box with a little cloth you had and that will kind of keep them nice and like soft and clean. But I have like a matte sort of thing that I've been getting on with loads recently. So now moving on to the second part of the video, how do I use runes and how do I interpret them? Firstly, I'm not going to tell you what every single rune means because this would take like a hundred years long. In this part, I'm going to show you how I do rune casting and a couple of methods that I feel like I use the most and that work best for me. There is a lot of different rune methods that you can use just because they work for me you may not want to use them for you. So I will be discussing three techniques in particular. The three norns, the four stone technique, and the Odin's nine layout. Quickly as well, before I start this tutorial, a couple of people were confused in my tarot video whether you just like interpret tarots or not. Usually a set of runes and a set of tarots come with like a little booklet which tell you what the runes and the symbols on the runes mean. And they will help you interpret them even though everybody sometimes interprets them in slightly different ways. And it will usually take you a while to learn the runes off by heart. If you keep practicing at it, you should get used to it pretty quickly. Some people choose to ask a deity before every use for some guidance, which is totally your choice. Some choose to not. Like I said, some people ask ghosts or deceased people that they know and love to help them with this as well. But like I said, it kind of depends on the wick and using them. A lot of people know the rune method where you bundle all of your runes into a cloth and then chucking them out carefully. And the ones that are laying up with are the ones that are helping your situation. I've done this a few times, but I'm not the greatest fan of it. I feel like the accuracy for me just isn't as accurate as I feel like it should be. I have actually enjoyed this method, but I do enjoy these other methods more. Again, I think it depends on the situation, what method you use. Now I'll be showing the three methods that I commonly use. Finally, Harmony, get on with the fucking video. So before I do any rune casting, I tend to do a couple of things that I do every single time. Firstly, I set the scene. So I light some candles or burn some incense and just be in a 
quiet, relaxing place. I like sometimes doing them at my altar or somewhere flat, but most of all, just a calm, quiet place where you will not be disturbed. Next, I connect with them. If you've recently purified them with smoke, that's great, but I do still feel like before every reading, I just like to connect with them a little bit more. So sometimes I begin with just knocking the energy out of the runes. So I hold them in the hand that I do not write with and just with the other hand, knock all the energy out of my runes. Then I hold them with one hand underneath and one hand above and just try to project all of my energy into them. And I just do that until I feel like it is just complete and I put as much energy in as I need to do. Then clear your mind from any other things that may be distracting you. I definitely recommend being in a good mindset for doing rune casting. Try not to do this while you're distressed. Hold your bag in the hand that you do not write with and with your leading hand, rummage the bag from the outside, just mixing up the runes. And while you're doing this, think of the question of the situation that you need insight in. Once you have the question in your mind and you feel like it's time to stop mixing the stones, ask the question clearly out loud. Some people do prefer to ask the question out loud. Some people like to just think it into their mind and kind of project it into the runes. So the first method I will be showing you is the three norn method. This is the kind of basic past, present, future method. So I would do all this what I just told you and this is where I kind of leave off. So with your hands without looking inside the bag of runes, pick your first rune and lay it onto the cloth or mat that you have. This is represented as the past as it affects the future. Then I lay the second rune down next to it. And this represents the presence and the problems that are affecting the situation right now. And then I take the last rune and I lay it next to it. This is the possible scenario that could come out of the choices you make in the near future. So like I said, that is a very, very basic one to start off with. I practice that constantly over and over again when I first got runes and I do still use it to this day. Next, I will be showing you the four stone method, which again is pretty simple again, but I do enjoy using this one a lot. Like I said, repeat the first steps that I told you about. So firstly, I remove four stones from the bag and lay them out one by one in front of me on the cloth next to each other. The first represents the past influences on the situation. The second stone represents the present influence of the situation. The third stone represents the future influences and the fourth stone represents the energies and behaviors of the situation that will remain the same. This is a very common basic one that I do enjoy using, probably one of the most. If I'm planning to meditate with some rune stones and I feel like I kind of need to, I will tend to do this method just because I feel like I'm drawn to more certain runes while doing this method. But if you want a more more deeper insight into the situation that you are having troubles with, then I tend to use a method called the Odin's Nine Stone Method. So firstly, I take a rune and I lay it out in the center. And that is again, the influences from the past. Stone represents how you or whoever runes you're reading feels towards the past situations. And you lay this above. The third rune goes opposite to the middle of the two runes you laid, and this is the present and how it influences the current situation. The fourth rune goes above this, and this is the feeling the questioners have to the situation now. The fifth stone goes across and opposite the first rune, and this represents the obstacles and things that you can see are affecting the situation. The sixth stone goes above that, and this is how you will feel about the situation after it is resolved. Now, as for the seventh, eighth, and ninth stone, you lay them next to the other runes, but going upwards. And these represents the power you have over each column. So seven stands for one and two, eight stands for three and four, and nine stands for five and six. Seven is the power that you must have or need to deal with the past situations. The eighth is the power that you have or need to overcome the situation that you are presently in. And the ninth is having power over what will come in the future and how you need to do that. I know this one is pretty complicated and I wouldn't practice ones like this unless you've kind of been practicing runes for a while, but I like to use this a lot. So they are the kind of basic methods that I use and enjoy most using for runes I do tend to use other different ones, but they are kind of like the three main ones. And just in case you've any of you guys are wondering whether you can have reverse stones like you can with tarot cards. Yes, you can have reverse stones if the stone is laying upside down, then it has a different meaning to that it does originally. But don't worry about that too much. Just in case you guys were wondering if I get any recurring stones, I don't get any except from one. And that is the Thorisaurs stone, because it does tend to come up a lot in my readings. I feel like I associate strongly with that stone a lot. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed me talking all about runes. Hoped it helped you 
get started in runes more than anything and learn a little bit more about them. Like I said, there's a lot to runes, there's a lot to tarot, there's a lot to crystals. So if you guys have any ideas that you would like me to touch on with these things, then definitely recommend them. Obviously I can't make every single one, but I love to hear your recommendations on these things. And um, I hope you're all having an amazing 2017 so far. Yes, I will be making more videos about the Wiccan holidays very soon. I hope you're all having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video.